Whitman and vice ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee, Congressman Rob Whitman. Congressman, good morning. Nice to have you on, especially on this Monday morning. Very busy day. We appreciate you joining us on this holiday Monday. Thank you, Rob. Great to be with you. Um, this, this situation, it started to develop yesterday. We now are getting more and more information. We have yet to hear from our commander in chief, who's still on vacation in Delaware. Um, so here we are. We could be dealing with the biggest hostage crisis in 40 years here in the United States. We haven't heard anything from the president. Um, how concerned are you about these six airplanes that have yet uh, been able to take off? I am very concerned. These Americans are being held against their will. They are indeed hostages by any definition. And now we hear uncertainty coming out from the administration. The comments by the State Department are, well, we don't have people on the ground. We're not sure about what's going on. But we're certainly willing to help. That sounds like to me a complete disconnect by this administration. The president should have this on the front burner. He should be all about getting Americans out of Afghanistan. He should be all about telling the Taliban, under no circumstances, will you hold these Americans? You will let them go. And if you do not allow them to leave Afghanistan, there will be immediate and severe consequences for that. That's what leadership is about. But the reason we find ourselves in this situation is truly the doing of the president. And that is this, this chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan where we have no diplomatic presence on the ground. And the, and the president said he was going to help get Americans out. Doesn't look like to me there's a whole lot of help going on today. So you do, you do believe that we are in the midst of a hostage situation right now, given what we know? Well, every information that we have before us, if Americans are being held against their will, I think by any definition they are hostages. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we get them out, period. They should be able to leave immediately. We understand they are in safe houses right now. Glenn Beck's nonprofit uh, paid $750,000 to Cam Air, which is the major airline there in Afghanistan, to basically rent those planes to get 123 Americans out and about 1,600 uh, Afghan refugees who are our allies. They all have special immigration visas. Um, are you surprised that President Biden didn't get back to the White House to try and address this situation more forcefully yesterday? He should be back at the White House making this top priority. Here's the Taliban trying to shake down the United States. He should be unambivalent about this. He should go back and tell the Taliban, you will allow these Americans to fly back to the United States without delay. And if so, here are the consequences. I mean, I think this is demanding leadership. It's demanding keeping this situation from getting worse. Again, when people are held against their will from being able to leave that country, I think by any, any measure, you would say they're being held as hostages. That needs to be addressed immediately. Congressman, we had uh, former Deputy National Security Advisor KT McFarland on the show not long ago, and she, she predicted what we're seeing right now. The scary thing is, is she said there's a process. It starts with hostage taking. You'll then see kidnappings, and then ultimately so you see assassinations. Uh, you see beheadings and things like that. If this isn't addressed, and I mean like today, is that where we're headed? I think it only gets worse. If the Taliban believes that they can get away with these sorts of situations, they will accelerate this. They will do everything they can to either embarrass America or to extract concessions from America. I believe the president needs to act immediately. Because right. if he doesn't, uh, as he has shown he hasn't and hasn't taken strong action in Afghanistan, things are only going to get worse. And Americans will continue to be held at risk just as we saw in the chaotic withdrawal there at Hamid Karzai International Airport. Sir, quick, uh, quick soundbite for you. I, and this, I just think this, this goes back to that, the, the, the gaslighting of the American people who have been, you know, probably enjoying themselves one of the final weekends of summer here, Labor Day weekend. Um, a former uh, national intelligence advisor, Sue Gordon, was on some of the Sunday shows yesterday. She claimed that the United States is far safer today with our troops out of Afghanistan. Take a listen. From a counterterrorism perspective, we are decidedly safer. Um, we have collectively, with the help of allies and partners, um, waged great effort to disrupt the networks, to take away the geography, and to make, improve our efforts to detect things going on. Just wanted to get your reaction to that. Do you agree with that assessment? I absolutely do not. We now no longer have the ability to collect information on the ground in Afghanistan about what's going on, that human intelligence, we can't also intercept 
communications to understand what the Taliban is doing in relation to terrorist groups there. That's called signal intelligence. We don't have any of that now, so we really don't have good situational awareness. We are operating at great distances to try to gather intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. I would argue our place in South Asia today is weaker than it was prior to 9-11. Mm, yeah, I agree. That's a great point. Congressman, great having you on. We appreciate it. Um, we hope to have you back on soon. I, I'm hoping this situation doesn't develop. I'm hoping those planes are, are wheels up very soon uh, to get our people back here to the United States. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. We pray our American citizens get back home quickly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. I want to bring back in former U.S. Air Force General and U.S. Military